Hey everybody, this is Brian at Primo Chill. Today's video, we are going to take a look at the uh, new Primo Chill Rigid Bender. Uh, this is a tool that we've been working on for a little while now to kind of perfect. Uh, so it makes it easy for you guys to do bending of your rigid uh, tube. So we're going to kind of do just an overview of the product today and do a couple simple bends. Uh, didn't really want to go into an extensive, uh, you know, bending tutorial at this time. So um, just want to cover a couple things uh, on the bender itself, what it comes with, and you know what you guys can expect when you get one. So uh, basically, it's just uh, I don't know, probably 15, 14, 15 inches long. Uh, comes with three positionable arms, and basically. Uh, they're held on by bolts that run in a little rail in the back here, so you're able to slide them back and forth. Um, also comes with four rubber case feet, so it gives you a nice, uh, you know, surface to work from, and you know the bender's not going to be moving on you when you're trying to do these bends. So, uh, so basically, you get the bender itself, four of the case feet, uh, six total screws, and six of the thumb nuts and uh, three bending arms. Uh, if you look at the bending arms, uh, we did uh, scruff up the sides a little bit. Uh, when we were doing a lot of the testing, we noticed that the tube would slip on, on these edges here when we were trying to do the bend. So we roughed them up a little bit to, to add a little bit more grip. So, so that's basically what comes with the benders, the arms, the screws, the nuts, uh, and the case feet. Uh, on the bender itself, it also has uh, some mounting holes. Uh, there's three on this side and two on this side here. So if you did want to mount it to a bench, uh, say you're doing a, a specific build that uh, you know you're using, you know you're building multiple PCs with the same exact bend in it, you can actually mount it to the table, set up your arms, and kind of just really use it more as a production bender. So, um, but the way I, I prefer to use it is, you know, not mounted with this rubber feet. So, you know, I can take these screws out easier to reposition an arm. Um, so, you know, I like to have it pretty much, you know, I could take it with me if I need to, don't need a huge bench to mount it to. So, uh, just gonna go over like I said, a couple different uh, bends that the the bender can do. Um, if you're looking for a tutorial on actually how to bend the tube uh, with heat and all that good stuff, we do have a video that has all of that uh, already online that uh, you know people have looked at and got the, you know some good tips on. So if you're kind of new to the bending, you might want to watch the bending video first. Um, because I'm not going to cover you know a lot of what we did and how we do it kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to primarily utilize uh, this video to show you a few different ways you can actually use the bender to bend. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and turn on the heat gun uh, so we can get some heat uh, on the tube so we can start bending it for you. So I do apologize about the noise. So while I'm heating this up, uh, just to kind of give you a couple different, uh, just give you a little rundown of the bender itself. It does have a ruler here at the top. Um, so if you know that you have, you know, five inches between, you know, say your GPU block and your CPU block, and you want to make sure that you have that measurement down correctly, you can use these arms to slide in position, you know, right to the five inch mark. You can tighten it down, and when you go to bend, you actually have a stop, and that's going to be five inches. So uh, it does go all the way up to 11 inches. Uh, I don't believe there's that big of uh, you know bend to bend runs. There may be, uh, but you know I think 11 inch uh, is is pretty good as far as being able to get the right bends out of it. So. So if you know that your, your bend is five inches and say you want to go into another bend, uh, you know, so you want to put a 90 on here and then you want to come up to here five inches and then straight down and then another bend, 
you can kind of set it up like we have it here. So um, another great thing about this bender is, is you could just lightly untighten these and you can move these and reposition these however you want. So what I'm gonna do on this bend is basically just do a, a quick 90 and kind of show you how easy it is to do a 90 inch, or I'm a 90 degree bend here, uh, just based off of just these two here. So, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna heat up the area on the actual, uh, we're using PETG today, guys. Um, we found that the PETG is a lot more forgiving uh, for beginners and, uh, you know, it's a lot more uh, durable. So if you're doing multiple bends in a system and you want to be able to have, uh, you know, good, rigid uh, bends that, you know, aren't going to crack over time. Uh, we've noticed with some of the acrylic, if there's been overexposure of heat uh, on the bend that that bends uh, over time cracks. The PETG, there's a lot of videos out there showing guys beating these things up with hammers and it not cracking and then them hitting it with a hammer, uh, hitting the acrylic with a hammer and it just shatters. So today we're gonna use the PETG. Uh, we've preloaded it with our silicone bend tube and a little bit of our olive oil to make it easy to pull out when it's done. Um, so I know that I'm gonna have my bend in this area here. You guys can use like a, a white wax pen if you want to to put the heat zone where you you know you need to have your bend. So again, this is just demonstration purposes. I'm just gonna go ahead and heat this up real quick. And what we've also noticed with the PETG, there's a lot less uh, kinking in the corners. Seems like the material is a lot more forgiving as far as uh, when you heat it up and it goes back, you know, goes back to cool down and solidify. It uh, it doesn't leave a lot of kinks in it. Uh, we've noticed that with the acrylic, it actually does leave a little bit of kinking. So with the acrylic, it's really important to get it at a good temperature and do your bend immediately. The PETG, we've noticed that you don't necessarily have to do that. You can you have a little bit more of a work time, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to heat this up. And what I want to do actually is get it to a malleable point. And you know, we have a lot of guys out there that do hand bends to where they can kind of just hold this and they know that's the bend that they want. So we're gonna go for a 90 on this one. And what we're gonna do basically is heat this up a little bit more so we have a little bit more time to do it for the video here is we're gonna actually take this bend and bring it in here and right up against this. And then what we can do is we can bring bring over the second slide here, the second arm, and we can hold that in a position at a 90. And basically, we can hold that to the 90 until it cools off. So as you see, we put it in, we slid over the other arm to kind of pinch it together and gives us, you know, we can look up here that we can see that this is perfectly straight coming off of here. And we know that this is straight here. We've lined this up. And we can pretty much just leave it there until it cools down. Um, normally when we do bending, we have a fan, uh, you know, eight or 10 inches away that kind of helps us cool down the part a little bit quicker. Uh, I don't want to use the fan in this video just for the fact that I want you guys to be able to hear me. Um, so this is one, one way you can use the bender to get a nice 90 um, to where it's actually being held in place. Uh, you don't have to worry about it kinking or whatnot. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I can just kind of take this out and you guys can see that we have a nice, clean, 90 degree bend. No kinking in the corners. Just perfect. So, nice little being able to come over the edge and down here using this to slide to lock it into place. So, that's one of the ways you can use this bender to do quick 90s. Um, as you can see in these back here, I did a couple test spins before we started here. 
So I did a 90 on this one, and then I came back and went to a different plane, basically. And what that means is, is it's being curved in one direction and then coming into another direction. So I can show you how to do that bend um, on this piece here. And basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this piece up and we're gonna come around this corner here and do the bend to another straight. I'm gonna use the same principle. I'm gonna bring this over to where I need it to be. I can slightly tighten it down a little bit. Not all the way because I wanna make sure that I get that in without you know too much effort. And basically what we're using this second arm for is to make sure that when we go to bend this, that this piece here isn't kicking out. So it's actually holding it in place right here. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be a tight little bend here, but I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna heat this area up here uh, with, the heat, with the heat gun, and then I'm gonna come over here, and as you can notice, I did it vertically. I'm holding, instead of holding it down this way, I'm actually gonna hold it up this way, and I'm gonna perform the bend this way so we can get a secondary plane done on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up real quick. And with these benders, guys, we uh, we include three arms. Uh, we do have, uh, we are gonna have available arms by themselves. Uh, so you can add a fifth, or I'm sorry, a fourth and a fifth arm uh, to even do crazier bands to hold it in place even better. Uh, you know, just be, you know, I think three is great for most of the bands that we've came across, uh, but I believe that doing a, uh, you know, maybe having a fourth one might be a little bit easier for some more complex bends. So, so we have that here. We'll go ahead and heat that up just a tiny bit more. All right, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is basically just set this in between the two, kind of pinch it together a little bit, and I wanna tighten this top part. And basically I'm gonna rotate it up and I'm gonna bend it over. Hope you guys can see that. So basically I put that part in, so as you see it here, I tightened that same arm and brought this part over here. So now what I can do is just basically hold this in place until it cools. Again, we normally use a fan, uh, makes the bending a little bit quicker, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we did, we did bust out the fan to, uh, to cool this down, so. Still see that's a little malleable, so what I can do now is I can untighten this, and basically you can see, we're you know, this is our first bend here, and this bend originally went all the way across, we actually came in and added this bend to it. So as you can see, you know, we're coming up, up and over, instead of just up with a 90. So basically we put two 90s in this, uh, one in one direction, one in the other. So, um, so again, with the PETG, it's actually kind of nice. You can actually take it back, uh, you know, if you stepped away for a second or, you know, you don't like the bend as much. You can actually heat this PETG up um, to where it can actually almost go straight back. Um, with the acrylic, I, you know, we've tried to do that before. It doesn't happen. Uh, you know, it tends to kink. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stay round. It kind of flattens out when you try to re-straighten it out. So this PETG is actually a, is a great little tube to bend. So I'm just gonna reheat that real quick. And kind of just bring that back in to show you guys. You can bring this over. You can tighten it with the thumb screws or the thumb nuts and just bend it around. Again, tighten in between and bend it right around. And then just make sure that's level on the, on the flat part of the, the bender. Hold this in the position that you want. You know, it doesn't have to be a perfect 90. Say you need it to be more of a, a gradual uh, bend. You can do it that way, but for this purpose, I just kind of want to do a straight 90. And hold that in place until it cools enough uh, you know, to where it holds the bend in place. And then when you want to take it out, just un unloosen the screws, bring it out, and it's still a little, little bendy, but uh, 
you know, you'll notice that we're going in one direction and out the other. So that's kind of how to do a, a going to a separate plane as far as, you know, coming in one direction, going out the other. Um, this is what I did here earlier. Uh, I didn't do uh, on film. I just kind of did before we started. And basically I had, uh, I can show you real quick. I had the arms on this straight across. I had, uh, I believe this side here was at the top. And I took this arm and had it straight across here. I moved this screw up to here and had a straight plane on there too. So, um, so don't know how many people are going to have a you know a little heart monitor type bend in their system, but uh, you know this this bender can really uh, assist you in getting that done. So, um, as far as using these and you know, so say I'm going to turn this off real quick. So say. You know, after I use this, uh, you know, I want to bring them all back up. Basically, all you do is just unscrew these, flip it, screw them back in, and tighten the nuts. Um, that way, you can actually, you know, have all the rounds at the top. So, what I'm going to do on this next bend um, is kind of do more of a gradual bend, and then into a, uh, a gradual bend on this side, and kind of just setting that up. And this is going to be not necessarily a, sh uh, I'm sorry, a sharp 90. It's more going to be more of a gradual 90. And what that is going to do basically is going to, it's going to allow us to not have such a, uh, a rapid corner here, uh, but more a bend here and using this more as a, uh, a backing to hold that bend in position. So go ahead and heat this up again real fast. And again, this PETG actually heats up a lot quicker than the acrylic does. Um, so, you know, you're off to bending a little bit quicker. Uh, again, it's just more forgiving than the acrylic. And, uh, you know, from the testing that we've done, it's just, uh, you know, a heck of a lot stronger than the, uh, than the acrylic, uh, you know, as far as durability and whatnot. So I got that. So what I'm gonna do now basically is, just wanna make sure that you can see this, is I'm gonna come in here and then I'm gonna bend it this way, okay? And once I have it bent there, I can actually just hold it in position until that gradual bend cools off. And again, not necessarily am I using this tip here to do the bending. I'm actually just using, you know, this angle and this angle to give myself a gradual bend. And you know, it does, it gives a great little bend in the corner, nice and smooth. You know, when you're bending this tube, you don't need it to be directly against a surface to bend. Uh, you know, we have a lot of guys out there that are uh, hand benders that, uh, you know, they don't use jigs, they don't use mandrels, they don't use anything to, to get the corners that they want. So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be snug up into a corner to get the bend. You can actually use more of a gradual, you know, I want to go from this angle to this angle. And again, we use cooling fans to cool these down a little bit uh, quicker. So we're not having to sit here, uh, you know, wait for the, the PETG to kind of re-harden, uh, cool down or whatnot. Um, so that's, that's another bend, real simple. Um, and save this last one here. What I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna try to come up here with a bend, up to here, and then bend back to here. So all one fluid bend. Um, basically what I need to do for that is, is I need to find out on my tube where I need to heat up. I don't need to heat the whole entire tube. I just need to heat an area here. And then I can kind of measure it this way. Okay, that bend's gonna be there. And then I need to heat up here. So just by eyeballing that, hopefully I'll be able to find out. Again, you guys can use, uh, the wax pens, the white wax pens, that uh, is great for marking, and they, you know, they just smudge right off. Sharpies are a little bit harder to get off, so I look at using, uh, you know, the wax pens or whatnot. So I'm going to do this one last bend for you guys to see, just you know, 
how easy it is to use this bender to do bends. Uh, you know, with a ruler on there, you're able to make sure that your measurements from one block to another uh, is simple to use uh, to make sure that, you know, it's accurate. For, you know, if you're going from, a, a say, a, a CPU block to a RAM block, you know, you have a three inch, you know, between the two, you can set this up right at three inches and do your bend and, you know, feel pretty confident that, you know, you're going to have, a, you know, good results. So as you see, I kind of come in here, I look at this, and now I'm going to heat up at this position up here real quick, while the other end is malleable. And right before I go back to the to the bender, I'll just make sure that that other end is still, you know, bendable, it hasn't set up on me. Again, the PETG gives you a lot of working time. The acrylic likes to cool a little bit faster. So if you're doing a little bit more complex bends like this, uh, you know, I certainly recommend using the PETG, so. All right, so we have our first bend here. And then our second bend, we're gonna put here and I want to do more of, say, a 90 at this end. Just like so. And I'm going to hold that into place until this one cools. And basically, I'm just going to hold it until it gets nice and, you know, set up here. And then I can just hold it at this one end. And again, I didn't do measurements on these to, you know, to be exact. Uh, you know, I just, I'm kind of doing this to show you guys how we intended the bender to be used. Uh, I'm sure you guys will come up with a ton of different ways to use it. So, um, so as you can see, this bender came out pretty good. Uh, no freehand bend. This one's still a little bit warm over here, so it's flexing a little bit with this bend here. You know, the bends in here are perfect. Again, these don't have to go up against anything to get the bends. So, as you can see here, this one's not touching anything. It's using the natural angle of this here and this here to create a bend. Turn that off real quick. So as you can see, with this, with this bender, we're able to come up here, do a 90, come back, and then do it a 90 in the, in the other direction. So, you know, again, like I said, I'm sure you guys are going to use Tons of different ways to you know utilize this bender. You can take arms off uh, to where you want to just do one fluid loop. Uh, you know you can add additional arms to it. It does come with three, uh, but you know you can add a fourth or fifth arm just to get those real intricate curves that you may want to get. Uh, you know in in the system, kind of set your system apart. You know if you want to do more of a parallel together bend, you know you can come in here wrap around here and then back out. So, you know, these are held in place just by these, these thumb nuts here. They're not gonna go anywhere, so they're gonna hold right uh, in place uh, till your, your bend is cool. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of it, guys. So, uh, again, I wanna thank everybody for, uh, for your business, and I really appreciate uh, all the feedback on the new products that we've come out with. Uh, it seems like everybody's really enjoying them. Uh, again, you can always reach us at uh, Primo Chill, or I'm sorry, support.primochill.com if you have questions or concerns. Um, and again, you can always reach us on Facebook. Uh, you know, we have a bunch of guys in there always waiting for questions, answers, uh, you know, just to help, uh, help everybody out as best as we can. So again, uh, we appreciate your business and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.